So I, 28, female, got married to my boyfriend of four years. He's 30, male. Three weeks ago. His family has been staying over since our wedding because his mother claims that their house is undergoing a renovation job and needs time to be fixed. I wasn't too happy about this, but my husband and I were supposed to leave for our honeymoon in a few weeks anyway, so I didn't put up much of a fight. Before the wedding, my mother-in-law, 54, female, and sister-in-law, 25, female, had been civil with me, and even while we were dating, they'd been quite nice to me. I'd never had any problems getting along with them, so I didn't expect the wedding to change that either. But suddenly, once I got married, they did a complete 180 and started acting like I wasn't a new member of their family, but their personal helper and expected me to wait on them all the time. They'd been living with us since a week before the wedding, and even then, they'd been relatively easy to live with, so I was very surprised by the way they were treating me after the wedding all of a sudden. For the first couple of days, I did everything they asked of me, but then I realized that it would only get worse if I bent over backwards for them, and even I was really tired of working all day for them. So after five days, I told them to help themselves because I can't just drop everything I'm doing to help them do mundane tasks that they definitely know how to do themselves. I'm not going to constantly wait on them or clean up after them all the time because I've been gracious enough to let them live with me, but I'm not going to go out of my way and do things that they, as my house guests, are fully capable of doing for themselves. Like they'd ask me to heat up food for them to snack on at least five times a day, even while I'm working and they know how to use the oven. They'd leave wrappers and clothes all around the house, and I'm sure it was on purpose. So I put my foot down and told them that I was not doing any more than what was required of me for them. I've been working from home for a while and will rejoin work only after my honeymoon, and that just seemed to encourage them to give me more tasks and chores to do all through the day. On top of that, they'd always nitpick when it came to meal times and would tell me that I needed to work on my cooking skills, even though my husband or even anyone else, for that matter, has never had any problem. My husband's not working from home and he hasn't been around to see how his family, his mother and sister in particular, are treating me. His father-in-law was still as entitled as the women of his family, but at least he didn't talk down to me. He just didn't talk to me at all unless he wanted me to do something for him. I did try to tell my husband about this a couple of days back, but he seemed so tired after work that I felt bad even bringing it up with him. He's also really close with his family, so I didn't want to say anything against them just a couple of weeks after our wedding. Not without proof, at the very least. After I told them that I wasn't going to wait on them and they had to clean up after themselves if they wanted to stay here, they became considerably colder towards me and wouldn't even speak to me unless my husband was around. I didn't care because they were being really annoying and I just wanted them out because they were ruining my first few days as a newlywed. I was just waiting for an opportunity to find some proof of them mistreating me so that I could tell my husband what his family had been up to behind his back, and that opportunity presented itself three days back. I was working when my mother-in-law barged into the room demanding an explanation while holding my old phone and scrolling through a bunch of texts. I was too far away to see what the text said, but I did recognize that the phone was my old one, which had been stolen a few months before my wedding, right after my birthday. It was the first and only birthday I'd be celebrating as a woman engaged to be married, and I wanted it to be special, so I invited all my friends and family, including my future in-laws. My phone went missing towards the end of the party, but I didn't make much of a fuss about it since I didn't want to unintentionally accuse anyone of stealing. After everyone left, my husband and I turned the entire house upside down trying to look for the phone, but we couldn't find it. 
And neither did we talk about it to any of our guests because the implications of that would be really insulting. And we trusted all our guests. The friends I'd invited had been with me for over 10 years and I knew that they wouldn't do such a thing. And everyone else was literally family, so that was ridiculous. We agreed that it must have been misplaced somehow and decided not to overthink it, even though both my husband and I knew that phones don't just disappear and someone must have taken it. It was only when my mother-in-law walked in with the phone and shoved it in my hands, asking me to read the messages, that I finally realized who'd taken my phone that night. I read the text that my mother-in-law had been scrolling through and was shocked to see months worth of text that had been sent from my phone to my ex-boyfriend. But obviously, I hadn't been the one to send them since I didn't even have this phone. The text had started a day after my birthday and all the texts were basically begging my ex to take me back or calling my husband a loser and creep and that I needed him to rescue me or some crap. Luckily, my ex and I had blocked each other right after our breakup and while whoever had sent these texts had unblocked him, he hadn't unblocked me so these texts would never reach him. My sister-in-law walked in after that, smirking very smugly, and told my mother-in-law right in front of me that she was 100% sure that I'd been trying to win my ex back, even after my engagement, and said that they needed to tell my husband immediately so that he could get this marriage annulled. I knew instantly that this was all being orchestrated by my sister-in-law and maybe my mother-in-law as well. So instead of losing my temper, I kept my cool and decided to start recording this entire conversation. I had to use my laptop since taking my current phone out would be too risky. The screen of the laptop was facing me and they couldn't see it so I knew they wouldn't suspect a thing and I continued to speak to them very calmly. I asked my sister-in-law where she'd found that phone and she said that she'd found it stashed away under the couch which of course was a lie because my husband and I had searched for it the day that phone went missing and we hadn't found it there. My mother-in-law continued to grumble about how her son had picked a cheater of a wife who also happened to be lazy and in disrepair and kept mumbling about how she was so disappointed in her son's choice. I ignored her and spoke to my sister-in-law instead and asked her how did she know that was my ex-boyfriend and she bragged about how she'd done her research before her brother proposed to me and said that she knew I dated a guy with the same name in college and I'd been serious about him as well but we broke up a day after graduation. I was personally really surprised that she knew all about him but then she told me that she'd overheard my conversation with my friends at my party itself where I was talking about how I would thought my last relationship was bad enough to make me swear off relationships for the rest of my life. But my husband was amazing enough for me to break that vow. My friends and I had been discussing our college days and I guess we'd been making fun of my ex, like people sometimes do. And my sister-in-law overheard that. After that, I told her that the phone she'd found didn't belong to her and she had no right to go through it. And that led to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law getting all up in my personal space while they criticized me and told me that they'd make sure my marriage didn't last. My mother-in-law said that she was glad she'd found these texts against me and could use these to convince her son to stay away from someone like me who wasn't fit to be a wife and refused to attend to her in-laws, couldn't cook a decent meal and didn't have any respect for the family. I lost my cool at that and told them that I did have respect for family, which they really didn't qualify to be. There was a good bit of name calling and screaming after that, but I finally managed to push them out of the room and locked myself in. My laptop, thankfully, had been recording all of that and I saved it very carefully because that was all I'd need to show my husband. Later that day, when my husband finally came home, I could hear my mother-in-law and sister-in-law start to complain to him about what they'd found as soon as he entered the house, but I waited in my room for my husband to come to me first. 
He was very close to his family and I didn't know how he would take any of this. I'd made up my mind that if he chose to be accusatory and angry when he spoke to me, I'd know that he was going to believe his mother and sister over me and wouldn't even bother to explain. But if he behaved well with me when he approached me, I'd extend the same courtesy to him. I was really skeptical and nervous, but then when he knocked on my door and asked me to open the door in a quiet voice, even though I could hear his mother and sister clamoring in the background, I knew that he didn't believe them. I let him in and when he asked me what those two were talking about, I decided to play the recording of the conversation that had taken place earlier that day. We'd locked ourselves in and I knew that even my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were waiting outside silently because the outcome of their entire effort to ruin my marriage depended on how my husband would react. He listened to the entire recording really patiently and after that he only had one thing to say and that was whether I wanted to wait until the next morning to kick his family out or whether I wanted them to leave that very night itself. The way he said it was so calm and composed that it still brought a smile to my face because it just made me realize that even though this was his own family that he was talking about, he had no qualms about removing them from our lives if they troubled me. I felt a little silly for even worrying about whether he'd believe me or his family. Of course, he'd believe me because unlike them, I was telling the truth. Anyway, When he said that, I told him that I wanted them to leave right away and ended up telling them everything else about how his family had been treating me after we got married as well. And to say that he was shocked would be an understatement. He was livid that his parents and sister had been treating me like their personal housemaid and even had the nerve to call me lazy, unfit and disrespectful when I refused to wait on them all the time. He left the room immediately and told me to wait inside while he dealt with his family. Once he was out there, there was an immense amount of screaming and fighting and I could hear his mother and sister calling me all the names she could think of while his father insisted that he needed to cut me out right now because I was tearing their family apart. After an hour or so, the noise finally died down and I think I might have accidentally fallen asleep because I only woke up at around midnight and found my husband by my side. He told me that they'd all left and he would explain everything the next morning because we'd both had a tiring day and needed to rest. The next day, he explained to me that even when his sister was showing him the text that I'd supposedly sent my ex, he knew that it couldn't have been me. Not only because we knew the phone had gone missing ages ago, but also because the text didn't even sound like me. He also knew that my ex had cheated on me, which was something only my close friends and I happened to know, and my sister-in-law had no way of knowing that, which is why she chose to text him. And that was a huge mistake on her part, because everyone who knows me well knows that I would never go back to him, even if he was the last man on earth. He trusted me implicitly, but he also wanted to know what exactly had happened earlier that day, which is why he decided to come talk to me after he saw those texts, instead of confronting them and kicking them out instantly. He was very put off by this sudden change in his family's behavior, just like I'd been initially, since they'd been nice and civil to me in the beginning. But now they changed completely for no apparent reason. He told me that after I told him how his family had been treating me for the past few weeks, he couldn't control himself any longer and knew that he had to get rid of them. He'd seen his father pushing his mother to quit her career, to commit to becoming a full-time stay-at-home mom, and he was afraid that they were trying to force me into the same lifestyle. He told me that he didn't have a problem with me wanting to become a stay-at-home wife, but he wanted it to be my choice, not his family's. He was glad that I'd stood up to them nevertheless and apologized for making me feel as though I could not come to him with this problem, even though... That wasn't exactly his fault. 
We talked about what to do next and he said that he wanted to go no contact with his family until they apologized to both of us sincerely. I was okay with that decision so far because it's his family, his choice of how to deal with them. I obviously wasn't going to speak to them or attend any of their events anyway after this and neither would he unless they apologized or maybe even then. So this morning I was talking to my mother about what had happened and filling her in on the events of the past few weeks. My dad had a work emergency and so they'd been really busy after my wedding which is why she hadn't been able to keep in touch and I couldn't update her. When I finally did tell her that my husband was cutting his family off for me, I thought that she'd be happy about it. But instead, she started telling me that I was in the wrong here somehow. She said that I'd just been married for a few days and instead of trying to be more manageable and accommodating, I was being disrespectful towards my in-laws. She told me that now that I was a married woman, my work came second and my relationship with my family and in-laws came first, so I needed to apologize to my in-laws for overreacting. My mother believes that the reason my sister-in-law even pulled that stunt with the phone and the text was because of how disrespectful and self-involved I'd been to them because they were my family now. I couldn't believe that she wasn't taking my side even though she was my mom and had also been a working woman in the past so she of all people should be with me on this. I didn't think what she was saying was fair or even necessarily true because my sister-in-law had stolen my phone a few months ago, not recently. So she definitely intended on using it against me at some point. In my mother's opinion, I should have been more respectful of my in-laws and then my sister-in-law never would have used the phone against me. So she just wanted me to be on my best behavior and act as if everything that my in-laws expected from me was totally justified simply because we were family now. That sounded really skewed to me and I ended up getting into a really bad argument with my mother over this as well. I feel really upset right now about this and since I don't want to burden my husband with this and neither can I talk to my friends about this because it's a little personal, I'm here now to ask if AITA for encouraging my husband to go no contact with his family because of the way they treated me. Update one. Hey, just to clarify, my ex and I had broken up almost three years before I even met my husband. I started dating my husband when I was 24 and my ex and I broke up a day after our graduation ceremony when I found out that he'd been cheating on me with a girl from another college. I must have been 21 at the time. We got into a huge fight at the party the next day and I ended up insulting him in front of all our friends, which is why he also blocked me and hasn't unblocked me since. There was no overlap between my ex and my husband and by the time I met my husband I'd been single for almost three years and absolutely wasn't still hung up on my last relationship. My friends and I were making fun of him at the party not because I'm not over him but because he's an idiot and loser so he deserves to be made fun of. It meant nothing and we were just joking around. I don't have any feelings for my ex or any other man apart from my husband. His number was saved on my old phone by his full name, which is probably how my sister-in-law was able to figure out who it was and send all those texts. Also, about my mother, I did speak to my dad about this, like a lot of people suggested, and he did think that my mom was being unfair. But he also mentioned that maybe it was just her being old-fashioned, since even though she'd chosen to be a stay-at-home mom, but that was by choice and not because my dad had forced her to. He said he's going to talk to her and try to change her mind because this is coming as a shock to both of us. Update 2. Thank you everyone who took the time to respond to my post. You guys are right. Most of my problems exist because I'm trying to handle it all on my own. I need to step up and communicate what I'm feeling to my loved ones, especially my husband. I've just always been fiercely independent, so this has always been a weak area for me and I feel like I'm going to inevitably end up being a burden on people if I open up to them and tell them my problems. So I think I'll do what the comments and messages say and actually speak to my husband about everything that's been bothering me. I might even start therapy because my in-laws have been absolutely horrible ever since my husband kicked them out. 
It's been almost four days and even though I've blocked them all on social media, my sister-in-law decided to start posting absolute crap about me online. At least that's what I've heard from my husband's cousin, who happens to be a friend of mine. It's gotten to the point where a lot of my husband's relatives have all removed me from their socials. I don't know what she's been telling them and I don't know if my husband knows about any of this either, but I'm going to talk to him when he comes back today. He's been very busy with work and comes back home late almost every day because he's had to take up additional responsibilities for a few days. But we're supposed to leave for our honeymoon in a few days and this is taking a toll on me, so I need to talk things through with him before we leave. I want to spend our honeymoon having fun and relaxing, not constantly worrying about such things. Update 3. So I talked to my husband and he told me that he'd blocked his family, so he didn't know what his sister had been up to and he doesn't really check his messages often, so he hasn't been able to read the text that his relatives sent him asking about his sister's post either. He reassured me that I didn't have to worry about his family and what they thought of me because they were all irrelevant to him. If they wanted to believe the worst of me just because of my sister, then that's on them and he's not interested in changing their minds either. He's fine with not speaking to the rest of his family because of me. The only reason I even cared about what his family thought of me or what his sister had been saying was because I didn't want him to resent me for it. But when he promised me that no such thing would happen, mostly because his family really always overestimated how close they were to show off and intimidate me, and he'd had enough of it. He said that he never had any intentions of choosing his family over me anyway, and neither would that ever change because I was the most important person in his life. And really, that's all I wanted to know. I also told him about what my mother had said, and he told me that she might come around later, and she might. But even if she doesn't, I know that my dad and my husband are on my side no matter what. And as long as that's the case, I'm ready to deal with whatever comes my way. We're going to be off on our honeymoon in just five days and this honestly couldn't come at a better time. I'll be ready to rejoin work refreshed and rejuvenated. And oh, of course, happily married. Thank you, everyone here, for all the sweet messages and the advice. Stay tuned for more stories. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.